What you need to do is you need to walk up. Welcome to Cardboard City. We've been doing Cardboard City here at St. Anne St. Patrick for about seven years now. Uh, cardboard City, uh, the kids will spend the night sleeping in cardboard boxes. Well, most of these kids, what they do, they, uh, they build the car, the cardboard boxes and stuff. They, build, they put another layer underneath so they don't get wet. If you can see, they got like a little plastic on top of it that protect them from the rain. And they, can get, uh, they get very creative. We have to try to like stay warm, and I heard it's supposed to be like rainy, so we have to like use this tarp. So like when it rains, it won't like get all over our stuff. But sadly, like people out there in the world don't have like all the stuff that we have. We have to kind of like be able to get a sense of what they're feeling, so we can understand how hard it is to be homeless. <laughs> I have never experienced so far this kind of thing, so it's pretty exciting and I'm very happy. Happy that I got this chance to be here too. Put it like this. Put it like this. We are trying to build a church. The chapel. The chapel of the Bulgarian martyrs. One of the things that we did this year is each kid, as they arrived for Cardboard City, uh, were asked to um, take on a particular hardship and actually try and experience something that a homeless or handicapped person might experience. Um, I was given the assignment that my hands were bound just to see what it's like to be limited and doing using your hands and arms and building things. My challenge is to help her because she's limited, so I'm like an aid for her. So everything she does, if she needs help, I'll be like, oh yeah, here. It's hard, because I don't know what it's really like to be in a wheelchair, so it's kind of hard to get like the motion of it. Um, I guess I'm doing a kind of a imitation of what it's like to be a homeless person in the cold winter. I've got a thick blanket here, but I'm out in front of this sort of fan to try and show what it's like to be out in the cold. It's, uh, it's tough. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll actually go to Worcester, we will actually help with cleaning and painting at various uh, soup kitchens, homeless shelters. Let's just see it as a Catholic worker house, it's a soup kitchen where we feed the homeless and the poor every evening. The young people that are here now are giving our dining room walls a good cleaning. We're all asked by God to take care of the poor and that's how everybody can help. Some cook and bring it. Some come to clean, some come to just serve and then help clean up after. And it's a good part and everybody can help do the works of mercy. And the kids the kids get a lot in their faith formation to learn about the Catholic faith. Um, but this is an opportunity for them to really experience Jesus in one another, uh, in the adults who participate with them, and then ultimately in the homeless that we serve. You know how empathy is feeling for the person, but solidarity, you're almost you're one with that person. And so I think solidarity is very important because we have to show our brothers and sisters who are homeless or in worse shape than we are that we're there with them, they're willing, we're willing to help them out. You feel great when you're helping people and that's what God wants us to do, you know? He wants us to like help people and like see him through everybody. So like act like you're helping him himself. You can see so many examples of today's generation, generation of kids actually reaching out and helping others. And uh, it's, just a, it's just a blessing and a pleasure for me and for the others here who are involved in youth ministry to be, to be able to be a part of that. People talk about today's generation of kids um, you know, and, and, and speak of it kind of in a, in a negative sense that there's no hope for the future, but the reality, the reality of the situation is, is I deal with these kids every day and our future is in good hands.